It's just coming up to 10 minutes to the hour, and that means it's time for the last 10 minutes of today's programme. And today I'm joined by Professor Yves Coppens, a member of the French Academy of Sciences and one of the co-discoverers of Lucy, the eponymous hominid that is believed to be one of our oldest ancestors. Uh, welcome to the programme, Professor Coppens. Lucy was discovered in Ethiopia in the early 1970s and is thought to have lived along Africa's Great Rift Valley over three million years ago. You recently participated in a discussion here in Paris on the atom atomical evolution of humans. Can you explain to our listeners the importance of the discovery of Australopithecus afarensis? I hope I said it cor <laughs> correctly, or Lucy. You're probably better at it than I am. Yes, well, it was important at that time. It it was in 1974, and at that time it, it was really the, the, the oldest hominid known, uh, 3.2 million years old. Now we know much, much older than that, so it's not the same interest, but it's thanks to Lucy that we discovered that the, the ancestors of man, the, what we call the pre-humans, were at the same time walking and climbing. And it was uh, amazing for, for us to, to well, we, we, we haven't expected that, to, to find a sort of beings who are climbing like the ones before and all already walking li like the ones after. Uh, so it was a, a, an important discovery. But now we know much more, and we know more more of these ancestors, which are also uh, climbing and walking, so it's not new anymore. So as you say, L Lucy's not one isolated skeleton. There are over 400 fossil discoveries that are of the same species. Are these discoveries the holy grail of paleontology? Well, it's w one of them. I mean that uh, as far as history of sciences is concerned, it was a, a big, uh, big event at the time. And uh, Lucy was taken as a sort of symbol, and it's still, it's still a, a symbol. We know now some, some, uh, some people, if I can say, some paleo people, uh, much older, like, like the one in South Africa, which is called Little, little Foot, uh, little foot because the, the, the first bones that we found were the, the, the pieces of, of the foot. And uh, this one is uh, probably around 3.7 million. But we have in East Africa uh, some remains which are uh, 6 million for one and 7 million for, for Those the Those are the other. ones in Lake Chad. The one of, of, yes, the one from Lake Chad is 7 million years old, the, the oldest. The, the one uh, six million years old is from Kenya, which is also East, Eastern Africa. So, so what, what evolutionary differences occurred between like seven million years ago and, and the time when Lucy was, uh, was alive? Yes, well, not, not too much as far as the brain is concerned, but um, a, a lot as far as locomotion is concerned. The, the people uh, like, like Lucy are walking and, and running much better than the ones before. So it's, it's in the direction of our, our position and our behavior today. I mean that uh, it was quite important. And the development of the brain came just after. The, the development of the brain came around three million years as a sort of, of a reaction, of an answer to a climatic change. And this was the, the origin of man, the origin of true man, humans, this time. So the, the true humans came just after, after Lucy, if I can say. Mm. A few, well, just after, I mean, it's a few thousand years after you see, of course. Well, Africa's always been um, thought of as like the birthplace of mankind. Uh, there were, were other evolutionary strands of man which have been found in other areas of, of the planet Earth um, as part of the discovery over the last hundred years or so. Um, what, at what stage in the last 100,000 years, well, there, there used to be five different species of humans living on the planet. Why was it that Homo sapiens is the one that survived and the others didn't? Well, um, as you say, the, the origin of man is very, very clearly 
uh, in, in tropical Africa. And man uh, moved quickly, uh, as soon as he could, uh, from tropical Africa towards the whole continent of Africa first, and then through the Middle East, over all the, the, the ancient world, which means uh, Europe and, and Asia. And, and there, um, as soon as two point, probably 2.5 million years, 2.5 million years. For instance, I was in India a few months ago, and uh, we found there some, some remains, not, not, not bones, unfortunately, not yet, but sort of, of uh, remains of what have been at that time uh, maybe an ancestor of mine of 2.6 million, 2.6 million years old. So man moved quite quickly. And, uh, and again, he was all over Eurasia, uh, all over Europe and Asia, and went to America much later, around 50,000 50, years, years ago. And this uh, development is very well known now because uh, people are working almost everywhere. And we are, of course, collecting more and more bones. We love bones, you know, <laughs> <laughs> more and more bones and more and more stone tools. Uh, not everywhere, unfortunately, because some of them are destroyed, have been destroyed, but uh, in many places. So th this history of man is quite well known. So now, you, you were talking about Homo sapiens. Yeah. Homo sapiens is, is the very last one the very, for the moment, the very last species for the moment. And uh, Homo sapiens seems to, to be born also in, in Africa. Do you think it's something to do with Climate change. Do you think um, man has adapted to different climatic conditions? And that's yeah. why some survived and some didn't. Well, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure that the cl climatic change uh, has a, a, a very important role, essential uh, role, on the, the, the changing of, of species. Uh, just because the, the species, you know, uh, needs adaptation to, to be able to behave in a new climatic uh, environment. So climatic change has a, a, a very important role. But the, the current climatic change is completely di different because now we, we invent culture. And uh, when, when it's too hot, we, we take, take out our clothes. And <laughs> when it's too cold, we are just putting more more clothes on on us, and in not the same the same impact uh, as uh, at the beginning of of man. How do you see mankind evolving over the next years, millions of years? What, what's your uh, what's your ideal about how things might change? Well, I think that uh, humanity is in good health uh, because uh, living longer, obviously. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yes. Because, um, well, because, you know, passing from a few thousand of people three million years ago to one billion, one billion only uh, during the, um, the 18th century. And uh, passing from the uh, 19, 19, 19th century, uh, from the 19th century to today, uh, passing from one billion to seven billion means that uh, everything is all right. But, uh, um, you know, there, there, are, there are, of course, a problem because man is a carnivore and it's a predator, and he's a predator also against uh, himself. But his culture is, is wonderful and he's making fantastic progress, as you know. And uh, this uh, progress will help him to, to go somewhere else. The, the earth now is a bit too small, so he has to move. Uh, well, he moved all over the, the earth first, and he has to move beyond the, the earth. And uh, this will be the origin probably of new species, a sort of uh, sur sapiens, uh, super sapiens, uh, hyper sapiens, uh, something. Yves <laughs> Coppens, so, thank some, you very much some, indeed. Something like that. Um, not not hyper Coppens. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. And with that, we come to the end of this programme in English from Radio France International. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.